Wah! Oh my god! <laughs> uh. Oh. <laughs> So confused. Oh, no, no, ah, crap. Gotcha. Oh, it's enormous. But where have the books gone? Sorry. I'm just trying to incite violence between the trigger men and the oh shoot not me uh oh uh yeah okay that no that <laughs> that didn't work out quite the way i had hoped it would. oh crap <laughs> oh thought for a moment i was going right into the water what do we got the Amulet of Lost Voices. Speak with dead. The dead hold no secrets from Jurgle Scriveners of Doom. I love... These oh my god. Oh my god. Scriveners of Doom is the best title ever. I can't get much closer, game. Way to go, Pathfinder. As you plunge towards the base of the cliff, Mommy escapes your lips. Way to go, Wingnut. Once again, you've demonstrated your inability to sustain life. You quickly glance around the room to see if anyone saw you blow it. Thank you for playing Space Quest 2, Roger. You've been swell to watch. Have a nice day. The R.O. recently requested assistance in calculating whether the mass effect is a phenomenon that occurs only in our universe, or in all possible universes. It may be that our laws of physics only occur in a finite area, a bubble, if you will, in an ocean of other possibilities. I'm speculating whether... If you went far enough out, or created enough energy, you could reach a place where one plus one equaled three. Everything would change. All energy, all matter, all the underlying math of the universe would be unrecognizable to us. Why? What were you thinking? I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> oh boy. By popular opinion, your channel has gifted you 100... Tame duck billed platypus. Um, execute order sixty six. Oh, good God. Oh my god! Where am I gonna wanna stop these? Oh. Whoops. A little before that.
These poor dinosaurs, they're being sniped at from all sides. There we go. <laughs> oh, thank you, Othgard. That was perfect. Instead, I'm gonna phrase it as a call to action. No, we're not going there. Oh, I guess we're going there. And the underground moves right in. Well, I'm not cold anymore. I stand corrected. What? What's happening? Oh, that's so creepy. I've... I've done it. And it looks like... they know. Well... Let's not hang about. Then please, after you. Oh, that's so creepy. World of Wonders. We did it, guys. We made it to WoW in the 80s. Would be funny if he came here on his break and raided himself. That would be hilarious. We should try and make that happen. Greeny, if you're there, be prepared to raid yourself. So, let me get the raid started. Oh, oh we already... <laughs> you are there. How's it going, Greeny? <laughs> <laughs> He's got so much reach. Holy crap. <laughs> that was the best. Oh, come on. Tell me about Loom. For old time's sake, beat it. Say it. Say it. No. <laughs> Say it. Fine. You mean the latest masterpiece of fantasy storytelling from Lucasfilm's Brian Moriarty? Why, it's an extraordinary adventure with an interface of magic. Stunning, high-resolution 3D landscapes, sophisticated score and musical effects. Not to mention the detailed animation and special effects, elegant point-and-click control of characters, objects, and magic spells. Beat the rush! Go out and buy Loom today. Yes. Now get lost. <laughs> Achievement unlocked. Fan service. We have relatively limited storage. And, um... We have 394 branches. That kind of sounds like a lot of branches. It had not occurred to me that branches are going to be the bulk of our firewood over the winter. What? Who designed this vessel? didn't even know that you could do this. You're carrying so much that you can hardly move. You'd better drop something soon. Oh, you... No, 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 oh, oh, God, oh, God. Oh, no, 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 no. No, you don't. I'm so freaking close. And you're a damn ape. Oh, my God, you're so close. First Apex Guild. 
Oxygen. Oh shoot. Okay, I'm dead. <laughs> First death. Go now, please. Oh, crap. Uthgird, you made it mad at me. Oh, <laughs> So this is a colossal size map, which is quite a bit larger than the largest available in the base game. And it is a an island plate style. So it's kind of like tectonic plates that are generated as smaller islands instead of giant continents. That looks good to me, sir. Quite squeeze past this cannon. Oh, interesting. <laughs> well, they've messed with the wrong skull this time. <laughs> Can I call you Bob? <laughs> you may call me Murray. I am a powerful demonic force. I am the harbinger of your doom. And the forces of darkness will applaud me as I stride through the gates of hell, carrying your head on a pike. Stride? I mean, I don't need to understand everything, but I can say I'm pr plenty confused. Did a compi just knock my jeep back? What the what happened there? Getting a credit. Oh, whoa! Well, that happened. Oh my god. Well. Okay, now, uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the Library of Lore. Tonight, we're going to be playing some Fallout 4. So I hope you're all ready for that. Just get set up here, get the game in. Go. And we should be good. Hi. Okay. So I hope everyone's had a good day. Been really looking forward to this. I've reconfigured Fallout a bit with some new plugins. I put the forest back in, so we don't have the pines anymore. But uh, I found a new horror-esque sort. Um, that's not part of the horror, as far as I'm aware. Uh, a new horror-esque ENB. It actually just came out. It's it's not new, but it's a new release of an older one called Pilgrim. I wish it had been around for Halloween, because it looks amazing. 
The only problem is it does not support weather mods. So we're back to vanilla weather, but I guess that's okay. So we're going to carry on with what we were doing last time. Which is to say, uh, last time we played, we managed to get over to Diamond City. We got ourselves fixed up. And... What else did we do? Oh yeah, we, um... We completed a mission for the Oberlin Station folk. So we have Oberlin Station as a settlement now. Which is really good, because that puts us in striking distance of Hangman's Alley. That is going to be our goal for today. We're going to try and take Hangman's Alley. So that means... Actually, that means I should probably go back to Red Rocket here. I might need to go back to Sanctuary too. For Hangman's Alley, what with it being t close quarters and everything, I like to use explosives. Okay, there's nothing in Red Rocket. Man, this Pilgrim ENB in com combination with the uh, forest, it really does a good job of making Fallout look a lot darker and spookier. I really do wish. I mean, I, I think I might like this better than Misty Pines, frankly. Really do wish this had been around for Halloween. Now, one thing is, I haven't tested this configuration with uh, Diamond City. But I really believe it was the amount of fog emitters that was causing Fallout to crash when we went into Diamond City and changed areas a few times. So, after getting rid of the Misty Pine stuff, that did seem to disappear. It seemed to be working okay. Fusion cores, mini nukes... Okay, all I have stored here are bottle cap mines. But speaking of, I don't really want mines. I find maybe some of you folks are different, but for myself, I very, very rarely use mines in any kind of game, unless maybe certain types of tactical strategy games, they can be incredibly helpful. And it's not to say they're never good. I just don't use them very much myself. Oh. Wow. Oh, this looks so good. Oh, I love this. I don't think I'd love it as much if I... Well, yeah, I, I would love the way it looks. I don't think I'd love being out in it as much if I didn't have the hazmat suit. So good job, previous me, for making that happen. spooky. You know this area so well, it still looks terrifying. God, I hope somebody makes compatibility patches for this and the uh, the NACX weather mod I used to use. I'd love to bring that in with this kind of ENB support. But even without the weather and climate system, damn, this looks... So, ugh. It's so good.
can turn my pit boy light on, of course. I don't generally want to. Whoa, wait a minute. Where the hell did I end up? I don't want to be by the Drumlin Diner. How did I miss the road? <laughs> yeah, okay. Maybe one day somebody will come up with a better mod for trees than a forest. I mean, it looks great, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't deal with high winds particularly well. Where am I? That looks more like it. still not where I thought I was. Man, this really makes things look so different. I was looking for this thing. a little bit of sleep in skip the night even though it looks amazing come along Piper there's not supposed to be anyone here Piper okay now can I craft anything soup Perhaps, no. There, Piper. Be on our way. We still have to finish up at Cordoba as well. We'll probably have to snipe the hell out of the exterior at some point. But we were going to wait till we're a higher level to do that, so I'm thinking probably maybe 12, 13, depending on the perks we take. For now, I would be quite happy with Hangman's Alley. That's going to be tough, though, because, uh, you know, the thing with Fallout 4 is the further you get from the upper left-hand corner of the map, roughly around where Sanctuary is, the more difficult and deadly the game gets. Oh, 
Weird. I thought something was missing there. By the time you get down to Hangman's Alley, you're pretty close to halfway down the map. So the difficulty has risen significantly. Now, clearly, we've been even further south into Diamond City territory. So it's not like it's a death sentence going down there. But it's not to be ignored either. I gotta say, I love what's going on with these mods, but I don't count the flicker among that. That's not my favorite bit. Oh, and I see we're back to having the visible border of the settlement, too, even though it's not a settlement yet. That's a little weird. Now, I've modded this little train bit from Oberlin Station. The mod adds this, which is a very nice convenience feature. It's this little stairway right down to the road, so you can go back and forth between very easily. Quite fond of that. It also clears the trains from the tracks, which is a little bit of a convenience for you, the player. But it's almost more for when you start getting your provisioners set up between settlements. If I may have your attention for a moment, a multi-year subscriber has just resubbed again. Allow me to welcome you back. What the heck, Renamar? 65 months, that's amazing. Thank you so much. How are you doing tonight? It's really good to have you here. So, ooh, that was a little weird. We're going to do a little bit of work around Oberland, I think. Actually, what we're going to do first is check Oberland's inventory and see what they've got stashed here. Maybe I'm not aware of. Doing all right? That's good to hear. Oh, oh okay, so clearly I've been here before. I might want to take this missile launcher. Do they have ammo for it? No. They have a few potatoes. Nothing significant here under junk, unfortunately. We're still on a quest to get crystal. I need crystal so I can build radio transmitters in the settlements and attract more people so they can make more stuff and give me things. One day I will finish the main storyline for this game. I've played this game for more than 3,000 hours and in all that time, I've completed the main story only four times. It is a game that lends itself very well to not necessarily go trying to finish it's a really really good exploration type game glad to hear you're doing all right what have you been up to they're moving the right way.
playing random games these days lately it's settlement survival Ooh, i've heard of that one kind of like banished but supposedly better it just got out of beta recently and i saw someone playing it yeah that one's on my wish list i'm thinking about that one i don't know a lot about it yet but it does look really good There's a few games kind of along those same lines that I've got my eye on. I streamed one a while ago that's really good. It's called Timberborn. And it's a post-apocalyptic game after the fall of humanity. We, we are extinct. And the world is being taken over by sentient beavers who are becoming civilized. What manner of civilization they build is partially up to you. It's really fun. You played that too? Yeah. Alright, let's have a look here. All I have are Molotovs, huh? I do kind of wish I had a place closer by that I could save at. I mean, I guess... It's kind of funny. I went to and uh, did all that stuff to get Oberlin Station because it's relatively close to Hangman's Alley. Now I'm kind of thinking it might be even better to just save it a bed over at Diamond City. Which will also have the benefit of letting me test and see if Diamond City is indeed still reasonably crash free. So maybe we'll do that. Hey, Anstara, how's it going? Hey, Mad. Eh, it's been pretty good so far. I did a little bit of uh, light remodding on Fallout 4 after getting rid of Misty Pines. You can see it's now maybe even more atmospheric in some ways than Misty Pines was. I think it looks amazing. I had a rad storm in the night before... Uh, this day, and that just looked absolutely jaw-dropping. It was pretty spectacular. You like the slightly transparent look for the image? Oh, thank you. I wasn't sure how visible that was going to be. But actually, that's pretty strong on the darker areas, isn't it? If it's too much transparency, let me know. I can always reduce that, but I thought... I've seen a few other streamers doing it, and I thought it it helps the camera view not block the game quite so much. So I thought I'd give it a shot. Settling in for the weekend, watch some more Andor. I really like what they're doing with Andor. It's really good. What episode was that? We're now eight down, aren't we? And there's going to be 12 this season? Matt. Ain't got nothing better to do? Fine. Wow. Rude. Definitely Piper's little sister. Okay, so 
cautious about spoilers, then I won't talk about anything specific. I just, I love the way the show is going. I, I've really enjoyed every episode so far. Where the heck is Vadim? We haven't scared you off yet. Need a room? Yes, I do. All right. Here. Room two is yours. Enjoy. I always forget Yafim's name. I don't need to sleep. Just save. At the current rate, watching two every Friday will be exactly caught up on the week that episode 12 happens. That's awesome, Anstara. So yeah, there was no trace of a problem there in Diamond City, so I'm pretty happy about that. Can't call it confirmed yet that it's fixed, but that's definitely a very positive sign. Diamond City no longer nuking your game? I know, right? That was pretty terrible. Especially in a survival run where you really can't avoid Diamond City for too long. Unless you have an incredible tolerance for collecting rads and getting sick, of course. If you don't mind the unbelievable number of debuffs you can accumulate, then you're golden without going to Diamond City. But otherwise, you're going to need to use the dock at some point. Okay, here we are. Sweet. You sure know your way around a bobby pin. My rifle's not silenced. I can't believe I got away with that. Come on, Piper. I'd love to be able to snipe most of them if I can. It's usually when things start to go the route of the firefight that uh, 
and get in trouble. Piper! That's not a good place to sit. Slow down a little. It won't hurt long. Sniping is uh, thirsty work, don't mind me. Piper, I wouldn't do that. There we go. Not done yet, but that's going to be at least five that I've taken out now. Oh. Six. Oh, would you look at that? That's promising. That suggests very strongly that... Uh, might be done. Okay, that's it. I think so, anyway. Or no, wait. That's just a weapons bench. I need the proper workbench. Where's the workbench in this one? There it is. There we go. Okay.
adhesive, fiber optics. Damn it, nothing with crystal. I'm having such a hard time finding anything crystal. Oh, a combat rifle. That's quite the upgrade this early on. Very nice. Hey, Sketchy, how's it going? It's going pretty good. How are you doing? What's the unfortunate news? That's awesome. Hangman's Alley is taken. Hoping to avoid... Well, just spit it out. Surgery, ooh, really? It didn't sound like it was that ser serious with seven stitches. I mean, it's not fun, but that makes it sound a whole lot more serious. That's not good. I'm very sorry to hear that. Uh, all right. to forget how picky destruction in Fallout 4 can be. That looks about perfect, though. Holy shit, Sketchy, you cut off the tendon? Oh my god. Okay, that definitely, yeah, I, um... Wow. That's not good. Excuse me, lady. you'll be a lot more comfortable here. Or at the very least, you'll be a lot more out of the way. Excuse me, Piper. have anybody else hanging around that needed to be moved? Oh, we need to loot this. thought there was another body in this area. Maybe not. Hmm. There's some good news out of that, though. Well, that's, um, that's something. Uh 
Oh, that act, that's very good news, Sketchy, yeah. I know from damaging my shoulder, temporarily, thankfully, but still, that having a reduced range of movement sucks. Also, my neck, which, thankfully, I've been pretty successful so far at uh, restoring that. It seems to be going pretty good. Alright, what do we have on the go here? Confidence man, speak to Vadim. I don't want to do that yet, it's way too early in the game to be restoring Travis's comfort, plus we would have to go into that whole rescue thing, and it's, I don't want to deal with that right now. We need to investigate the water treatment plant, and that'll give us Grey Garden. We need to listen to the military frequency AF95. We need to talk to the... Oh, God, we haven't even gone to Ten Pines Bluff yet. We must have lost that bit of progress, which means I probably... Have I even done? I must have... Started on... Okay, you know what? We're going to go to Ten Pines. We're going to talk to the settlers, and then we'll see what they want, and... Oh, jeez, it's them. Yeah, let's try to avoid them if we can. Those named ghouls are pretty bad news. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Sketchy. Lord Caillou, how goes? One moment. There's the hydrate. And honestly, that almost accounts for the next dredge, too. There we go. I might be able to actually get rid of the next stretch redemption soon. Or maybe I should just keep it so that I have to keep maintaining it, but... Uh, turning my head that way, it does not hurt the way it used to. Which is very good news. I seem to have basically recovered my range of motion in my neck, speaking of range of motion. And losing it. You were hoping to go back to work? Yeah. Sometimes you just gotta take care of yourself, though. It kinda sounds like this is one of those times. You said you'd cut your hand the other day and it took seven stitches to fix, but man, I really misunderstood just the, how severe the cut was. I didn't realize it was anything that bad. That sounds kinda scary. Oh, boy. Does anybody happen to remember whether or not I saved the game after I took Hangman's Alley? I think I did. But I'm not 100% certain. Because I'm pretty certain this thing is going to murder me. Move! Nope, not her. She's on our side. Oh god. Piper, what happened? You know what? I'm gonna let her deal with it. <laughs> what 
going to get too far away just yet, but uh, she can deal with it. You're not dealing with it. What's wrong? Unfortunately, that won't be a thing. I didn't know either until you had your appointment today. Eesh. I just hope the thing moved on after it took down Piper. I don't see it. if they did manage to kill it. Moment, Piper. don't see a body either. Kind of a rude awakening next time you're going to be more careful. Yeah. I hope you're able to recover quickly and that the surgery is able to help. Okay, these people sorely need some defense. I won't be able to do a whole lot for them. I can do a little. Nope, I can't do a little. Never mind. Sorry. You're on your own. Now, still don't know if I saved back there. Let's make sure that I do here.
Okay, there we go. Pick that. Thank you, robots, very kindly. test runs while dealing with the uh, whole odd situation I actually found a couple of raiders right here I had to murder them but for the most part things don't usually respawn around there So how's everyone doing? I hope you're all ready for a good weekend. And uh, speaking of your surgery, Sketchy, do you have any idea when that's going to happen? One would hope soon. You know, this new ENB that I'm using, the Pilgrim ENB, it also adds new atmospheric audio. And it's very atmospheric. Oh, uh, pipe down, Piper. I'm sure you're used to dealing with it. You'll be fine. Okay, now I think instead of going the typical way that I usually use to get to 10 pines, what we're going to do... Ooh, little hunting. I'm going to head north along the train route. Uh, the, tr the train tracks here. No. It does come with some danger. I'm not talking about the bloat flies.
Donkey's note. Dealer said there was a big stash of chems up at College Square. Get them and we'd be set for months, or we could sell them and buy something stronger. Okay. That's great, but uh, where's the other fly corpse? That represents a meal. Or at least a good chunk of one. Damn it, I think it flew off somewhere. Oh, oh, oh. Yay. Okay. I'm gonna trust that we're being detected by Brahmin. Train yard up here. It's a little infested. Okay. That's not all of them. But it's most. It's the majority. Son of a gun. I just realized that I've missed two ad breaks already. What the heck? I should be taking my first break right now. Or several minutes ago, actually. I want to get right down to it. Red alert. Raid incoming. Alera, El, Joduri, and all librarians, please get all viewers and patrons into welcome shelters immediately. Library cards are available for distribution. What the heck? Eliza Liss, thank you so much for bringing your folks over with the raid. Welcome on in. How was your stream this evening? What brings you over? Um, if you've never been here before, my name is Gordon McLeod. I'm a variety streamer here on Twitch. I play a wide variety of mostly single-player story-driven games 
with excellent character and narrative development, as well as strategy games, sandboxy games, retro RPGs, and classic adventure games. So if any of that sounds good to you, please feel free to hit the follow button. I do have a little bit of a, a welcome video to welcome you in properly as well. Hopefully it won't scare too many of you away. Oh, Lisa. Okay, sorry about that. You can thank Stu. He recommended you. Thank you so much, Stuart. That's really, really awesome of you. Thank you, thank you. Welcome on in, everybody. It's wonderful to have you here. Let me get you a quick shout out. Just have to tab out. Don't mind me. Do you? How do you prefer to be addressed, Eliza, Liz, Lisa? What's the deal? I would love to address you properly. Uh, okay, and also I promised you a raid video. So uh, tell me all about your stream and what were you? What were you playing actually? the wrong shout out for that welcome on in maggie laughs that's a great username uh oh cult of the lamb i i i've never tried playing that i don't think it's my kind of game i will admit though i really love watching other people play it and i like having my little character in their cult that's really fun how did that go for you how did you enjoy it what did you get up to Cult of the Lamb, it was my first time playing it. It was super, super fun. You really enjoyed it. That is awesome. Well, I will be right back in a couple of minutes. I'm actually supposed to be taking a proper break, but I think what we'll do is since I was just commenting on that directly as you brought your raid in, uh, my raid video is like two minutes long, almost to the dot. So I'll just treat that as my first break. Thank you to our newest lore seeker. The Library of Lore truly appreciates your follow. Thank you so much for the follow. I really do appreciate that. Welcome on in. And now, here is the promised video. Welcome on in, folks. Let's get the stream started, shall we? Whoa! Oh, crap. Oh, no. Uh... Uh, runaway helicopter. Oh, damn it. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Oh, shoot. 69 form factor. Aspect ratio. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, crap. Whoa. Yes, whoa. <laughs> okay, that... Let's go for it. Hey, I have not, I have not looted that, sir. May still be coming, actually. That's a little bit of a preview of what you can expect around here. So thank you so much for coming in with a raid. You got a raid and run into your bedtime? No problem. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope you have a fantastic night. Let me just make sure. Oh. Huh. Okay. Uh, apparently, you are one of those streamers that I have followed. And I just have not had a chance to actually pop in on yet. So I'm already following you. I was going to make sure that I was following you, but I am. So, yay. That takes care of that. Have a fantastic night. Thank you once again for entrusting me with your community. I will do my best to take care of them. And 
hope to see you again soon. I will have to make sure to check out your stream at some point very soon. We're just trying to deal with the ghouls in this area here. Bedford Station, there we go. Anybody else? There's gotta be somebody else. Or at least something else. It doesn't necessarily have to be ghouls. Uh-huh, but it is anyway. New note. Yes, for those. Oh, shoot. Okay. Oh, hey. Sniper. Hey, shoot. Don't mind the clutter. I'm just going to make it worse. Don't mind me. Oh, I'm still carrying this combat rifle. I need to get that modded up. I mean, I'm not sure how much I can mod up a combat rifle at this point. It's still pretty early for that. How are you doing, Stuart? It's good to see you. I hope you're here. I hope you're... I hope you're here. I hope you're well. Spotlight control. Oh. Bedford Station recording. It's half past. She's late. Something's wrong. Someone's coming. Look. Five of them. It's a trap. Damn it. They've got us surrounded. What do we do? Uh, I'll draw them off. Give me a count of ten. Then uh, break for the tree line. What? Uh, Dutchman, I... There's no time. Good luck, A9. Ten, hmm. nine, eight, seven. No! No! I don't remember oh, this at all. I'm not going back. I can't. I won't. Critical failure in the track switching system has been detected. Please clear the ta tracks. Huh. I don't remember that recording in the slightest. That's really weird. No, okay, we don't want to activate the lights. Now, I think there may still be some ghouls hanging around. Oh, what do we have here? Ah, damn it. Not about you. Get out of my face. Oh my God, it's still only forty eight. Thank you. Oof, I'm so low on stim packs. Crap. Speaking your spatula.
Oh, the Dragon Age games. Oh my god, that is... Ugh. They were so good. Dragon Age games, honestly, they were unbelievably influential in the early years of my stream. I went through most of the series. I say most. I think I played them all. I didn't quite finish... Oh, hello. I didn't finish... Um, the last one, Inquisition. Or I guess the latest one, I should say. Since it's not going to end up being the last one after all. Lamo, how's it going, Kellenray? It's good to see you. Davis, you see the garbage in today's shipment? Even I can see that steel's no good. Couple of beams were already rusted through. Someone's gonna get killed. Damn suits, always trying to cut corners. Expecting to find a trap here. I guess it's not this place. That's a lot of weaponry. Hey, what can I do? Just writing out the side effects of this week's vaccines. Oh, fun, Kellenray. Yeah, I've got mine coming up next week as well. Only the one. I've already had my fourth COVID shot, but I'm getting a flu shot next week. you go. Piper? There you are. Hey, wait there. You say the word. Nope, follow me. Come on. Uh-huh. You don't mind lugging around cement for me, do you? can't carry more. Shoot. Damn it. Okay. Well, we were going to push on through, but I guess since that doesn't look like it's really going to go, we are instead going to head back to the drive-in. There is a trap, but only of your own making. There's an oil trap next to an explosive barrel. Yeah, I already set that off. That's why I threw the Molotov. I had my flu shot Monday and my fifth, the bivalent COVID booster shot on Wednesday. I'm immunocompromised, though, so my schedule's a little accelerated, as it should be. People who are most vulnerable and with the potential to suffer the worst effects should be protected the best and the fastest. Can I already go through here? 
Yeah, it did. I just noticed what is wrong with me. Adrenaline hungry. Oh, it's just over encumbered. Okay, never mind. What's wrong with me is that I'm going to break my legs in short order. Carrying too much crap. My doc actually started me off in 2019 with a pneumonia vaccine and doubled it up in 2020. I'm now protected until age 55, but then I've had about 12 bouts of pneumonia in the last seven years. Ouch, Kellen Ray. Yeah, that definitely sounds important. <laughs> Is Fallout 4, do you even have legs? I can confirm from the many, 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 many breaks that yes. They may not be the sturdiest of legs, but they do exist. How are you doing, Tigerung? It's good to see you. Just press V and ruin the immersion. Got ads incoming in a couple of minutes. Well, like three minutes. I will do my best not to get so caught up in everything that I forget about that. I'm glad to hear that. Ah. We're doing all right here. Oh, boy. You know that stunning looking rad storm that I mentioned earlier? That would be this. Lacrima, how it goes? We're caught in a rad storm and my legs are broken, but other than that, things are going pretty good. I hope you're doing well. Oh, uh, Piper. There you are. What's up? What you got for me? Looking for something specific? Want all your crap. The, um... Oh god, you have a fusion core? You don't need shotgun shells. Maybe she could use the shotgun shells, actually. 
I don't know if she ever does use shotgun shells. She's pretty pistol happy. I'm alive. All the rest isn't great. I'm very sorry to hear that. That does suck. Hopefully things improve soon, though. Okay, what does my weaponry use? This uses 308, that uses 45, but I can probably stash that one. Uh, my pistol uses 10 mil, and that's a baton. Okay, so I need 38 or 308 and 10 mil, and everything else. I can store up. Okay. Oh. While we're here. Can I do more cooking? Damn it. I missed it again. I will... Oh, God. Okay. Oh, this isn't a proper breakpoint, so there's no point in going and doing it, but... There we are. I apologize, guys. I was keeping it in mind, and I still managed to not catch the break. Is this... A... The rad storm is still going on? Wow. That's honestly kind of impressive. All right, books down, everyone. It's time to welcome a new lore seeker to the library. Thank you for the follow. Thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate it. Welcome on in. A bit downtime for my health lately, but otherwise doing well. Hopefully things pick up again soon and you improve. I seriously do, Tagarung. I mean it's a lot better now because I I have it set up so that it's right underneath chat. But uh, I really wish they would give us additional options, like some kind of, like you said, an alarm would be ideal. Something that we can set that just really gives you the alert that, hey, ads are incoming and you've only got X amount of time left. The bots are kind of helpful, but because they don't sync at all with the ad schedule, they're not as useful as they used to be.
Sure, it will pick back up your health cycles. Well, okay. That's encouraging, at least. May, <clears throat> May I have your attention, please? A two-year resubscription has just happened. I'm shocked, but thrilled. <laughs> Make it a sub incoming instead of ads incoming, if that's all right. That is wonderful. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Two frickin' years. That is fantastic. I really appreciate the support. Okay, I think... I, I was expecting to run into, like, mutant ha Oh. Okay, I was not expecting you guys. That was... Ah! That's what I was expecting. Rude. Only I was expecting it on the tracks, not from behind. Oh, thank you. I do my best. Trying to do better. I'm very surprised at how much fun I'm having with the social stuff lately. Kind of feel silly for sleeping on it for so long, though on the other hand, if I hadn't slept on it for so long, I wouldn't have such an amazing backlog of content to go through on it. I've been posting clips recently to TikTok, YouTube Shorts, and Instagram, and I've been getting really, really good responses to it, so I'm really happy about that. Channel is still really, really small, of course. Not a huge number of followers or responses. But given that I've only been doing it for a month, I'm really astounded by how quickly it's grown. Wait, what? We're here? Oh, hey, what do you know? What do you want? We don't need any more trouble around here. Didn't you ask the Minutemen for help? You're with the Minutemen? think you fellas still existed. I sent word with one of them passing traders, but honestly, I never expected anything to come of it. Most people don't put much stock in the Minutemen these days. It's bad business, that. Is there something you need my help with? Whew. Yeah. I'm damn glad you're here. There's a raider gang that's been giving us trouble for weeks. Stealing food and supplies. Threatening to kill us all if we don't pony up. We know where they're coming from. But we can't go up against a gang like that. Will you be willing to join the Minutemen once I've dealt with those raiders? I'll certainly give it a good long think. People have gotten used to not being able to count on you folks. It's not going to change overnight. Okay, then. So they did give us Corvega after all. That's a good thing. Alright. I gotta say, that was a lot easier than coming from the satellite array. Even having to deal with the ghouls and the stuff on the tracks and all that. I think that was definitely the way to go. Fuck! Other one go. Is that it? Oh, there you are. I think. Thank you, Kellen Ray. YouTube is one of the last socials you have left. Hey. Right in the nose. 
Ooh, level up. Wait, what? <laughs> God, I did. <laughs> okay. Lacrima, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I, I honestly, I did not know that alert was going to work. So that is really encouraging, really shocking, and really confusing because it means that they work for real, but not when I'm testing. I really appreciate that. Thank Lacrima. We are doing, I haven't really been talked about it yet because we haven't, um, I'm not playing the games that I have incentives. Although I should probably come up with some Fallout incentives too, because I'm going to be playing this all month as well. But uh, tomorrow we're going to be doing Skyrim, and we're going to have Skyrim incentives, and we're also going to have crowd control. And I've got my campaign, or I will have my campaign set up so that crowd control, when I've... Um, I don't think it'll be tomorrow. Well, maybe we'll do it tomorrow to kick it off, but I'm going to do an entire week late in the month, probably the last week of the month, where everything that comes in through crowd control, if you stock up on coins, that will go directly to charity. So uh, we're going to be doing Extra Life all month long in support of Sick Kids, which is going to be awesome. Uh, Sick Kids being a uh, Children's Miracle Network organization in the Toronto area. That gave me a jump scare. <laughs> yeah, it uh, it did that to me too. It did that to me too. But um, yeah, I was saying, Kellen Ray, I've actually got more socials now than pretty much ever before. I mean, I, I I joined a bunch of other socials several years ago, like uh, Mastodon, and then I promptly forgot that I even had it. But I've been brushing that off and starting to use it, and I actually quite like Mastodon. It's pretty good. The uh, main problem with it is the learning curve is kind of steep. Got local leader. Um, it, it's not the best onboarding process for new people, but I've got that. I've got counter social. There's a few others I've looked at. I don't think Twitter is long for this world at the rate Elon is going. It's not really doing very well. Hmm. So if I get strength up to six, we can do strong back and gain carry weight. In addition to the carry weight you gain from doing just straight up strength. I'll keep using Twitter as long as it provides me more entertainment than annoyance. Yeah, I'm not going to stop using Twitter right away. But I think it is going to go the way of Dig and other bygone social media sites of the past. You know, things that people thought were too big to ever die out. And then they died out virtually overnight. I think Twitter is going to be... It's not going to disappear. The site will still exist. But I think the user base is going to collapse. Science is tempting. I think we need to do sneak, though. On the waist, otherwise. Got rid of Facebook in 2017, got rid of Twitter earlier this year. Only keep Instagram for messaging with your sister. I've stopped using Facebook because, uh, yeah, I actually got locked out of my account ages ago. And they wanted me to do the whole verify my identity thing. And I tried it once and they never got back to me. And then I just couldn't be bothered with it anymore because, honestly, I hate Facebook to the point where I, am, I could recover the account pretty simply, I'm sure. But it's not worth it to go through the hassle of doing so. So I'm just going to leave it. Don't want to engage with my family's opinions. Those of them who have bad opinions. Yeah. Twitter holds the advantage for me that I'm on Instara on it, not my real life self. So you're less invested. Yeah, that's fair. 
I really kind of like Mastodon's model, though, and it's the same sort of model that Blue Sky is going to have. I don't know if you guys have been hearing about that. Um, it's Jack Dorsey's new venture that he's going to be starting up. He's already started taking applications. Oh, I missed a bunch of stuff in here. Um, like, uh, he he's accepting sign-ups for early access to the app when it comes out, but he's creating a new social protocol that's going to be very decentralized. And that, I believe, is called the AT Protocol. And then he's also creating the Blue Sky app, which is going to be the app built around the protocol. I'm very, very, very interested in that. We'll have to see how it goes. But, oh. More food. Excellent. But for now, I'm really enjoying Mastodon and kind of starting to get a little more familiar with the so-called whole Betaverse, which is uh, the term they're using for the Federated Universe, which is like a lot of people look at Fediverse or, you know, the, the fact that Mastodon is federated and they think it just applies to Mastodon, but actually... There's a whole, like, couple dozen sites of various types. Maybe several dozen. Might be closer to three dozen or something. A whole lot of different social sites that do different stuff that are all part of the Fediverse. It's not all just Twitter-style microblogging on Mastodon. There's image hosting sites similar to Instagram and video hosting and live streaming and full length blogging and just all kinds of stuff. It's really kind of wild when you look into it a little more and see what's going on. And if Mastodon actually manages to continue to grow the way it seems to be, it could be pretty fascinating, especially if then a lot of the sites also go on and start making themselves compatible with the Blue Sky, or the, sorry, rather the AT protocol that Blue Sky is going to use. I think it, overall, Twitter imploding could end up being the greatest thing that's ever happened to social. I've stopped using Facebook ages ago, only started using it for your last job, wanted to test the waters and then make stuff for students more accessible. When I got ill, there wasn't much reason to use it any longer. The content surely wasn't, yeah. Okay, let's do some cooking. Okay, so I don't need food or water at the moment, it looks like. I guess we'll take another stab at Corvega. I'm sure by now I probably have to take out all the raiders on the exterior of the building again.
I find Mastodon extremely confusing without being able to sink in tons of times to get my head around it, but it looks like much potential once I might be able to do so. Yeah. I'm sure I've barely scratched the surface. I hardly follow anybody yet so far. I haven't really done much of anything. Counter social is a little bit simpler. One thing I really like about both of them is that they both have available kind of built in a tweet deck like interface. In the case of Mastodon, it's default, which I really like. And in the case of um, Counter Social, it's built in. It's not default, but you can switch to it just by going into advanced settings and turning it on. It's really, really handy. Okay, so yeah, we did lose our progress where we had already started up with uh, Corvega. That's okay. One down. You were so lucky. I don't think they left, Piper. Strangely enough, I suspect they didn't. Guess we scared them off. I don't think we did that either. Yes. Expecting, but I don't think so. The whole convention right there. Stop moving. I have a lot of bullets, but they're not unlimited. Wow. I am worthless tonight. There we go. That's better. Okay, how are we looking now? There's still gonna be a few left. There should still be somebody up there. 
I don't think all of them are going to be spawned in yet until I get closer. Speaking of, though, hang on. There we go. Should be a couple in there. Oh, you're so lucky. I need a dozen spawn until you're close enough mechanic for IRL. That would be wonderful. That's not all of them. There are still a few left, but that is the vast majority of them. Well, you know what? Let's lock that in, shall we? Let's not walk right past the save point and not take advantage of it. Okay, ads in less than three minutes. Don't let me forget. Like two minutes and 36 seconds right now, 35. Very excellent. Minute and a half. Crap. Heads up. Okay, less than a minute, so I think what we're going to do before I go too far in, I'm going to take my break right now. 
And when I get back, the ads will all be done. If you are a person that has to watch ads, then I appreciate you doing so, and you won't be missing anything. So I'll be back in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere, unless you need to get up yourselves and grab some food or a drink or whatever, in which case this is a great opportunity. I do kind of have in mind all the happenings before. Um. Bastila is a frickin' lifesaver. It's called How to Get Ahead in Navigating. What? Oh my god. It looks like instructions on how to get ahead. We could give him our head and use these instructions to get ourselves a new one. Yes, I suppose we can give you this now. Thanks. Gotcha. Now watch a courier show up again. At least he's enclosed. <laughs> oh my god, we get the Battle of the Titans. It's the T-Rex versus the uh, Triceratops. At least until T-Rex gets tranked. These guys have got a hell of a show. There we go. That was so okay. much better. Now how to get out of here? If it's not obvious by now, the only thing keeping this a park and not a prehistoric hunting ground are the fences. Let's see what we can do to improve it. I love that the jeeps are self-correcting when they flip over. Bobby, thank you. Okay, I'm back. Thank you, Lagrima.
I forgot what a wealth of bottles this place is. Okay, now... Might be a little bit heretical, but I think what we're going to do is actually make a run back to drop crap off. Before I get too overloaded. 159 of 165. Yeah, this is about the perfect time to do it. Unfortunately, I missed the anniversary stream, but I hope a very belated eight year stream anniversary is still welcome. Absolutely. Thank you so much. It was a really fun stream. Hard to go wrong with 16 hours of Skyrim. We're going to be doing a lot of Fallout and Skyrim uh, for the next while. I don't know exactly when. It really depends on when Starfield comes out. But Starfield has me really in a big Bethesda kind of mood. So we're going to be doing a lot of... Um, these games that I might even throw in some others as well if I can get Fallout 3 if I can get Oblivion if I can get those all working we might do a bit of those as well you never know <laughs> actually uh, no unfortunately not Lacrima I really need to get off my butt and do that I've just been making myself crazy with more work and more work and more work all this stuff that I'm having so much fun with, all the video work, doing the clips, and there have been some things where just enormous numbers of clips are coming out of some streams. Getting all of those prepped and made up and ready for the clip show and then also taking on the... Uh, at the extra work. It's not a lot of extra work, but it's a little bit of extra work doing them up for the social stuff I really haven't had a lot of extra time for stuff one of the reasons why I'm a little bit disorganized with my extra life preparations this charity stream event is because I've got all this other stuff on my plate as well But we'll see. It may be that I'll just kind of go through most of my backlog and then I'll set a more sane schedule for releasing. I'm trying to do at least one video every day on all those three sites. It's the same video, so it's not like I'm doing three a day, but, uh, you know, still have to post them, still have to get them ready and everything. I might go to one every two or three days instead eventually when I start running out of backlog to work on. And that'll make it a little bit easier. But there have been some Days Gone streams and some Skyrim streams where I've ended up with like 20 clips out of the individual thing. Which is both amazing and also terrifying. Because that's a lot of work. And it doesn't necessarily mean that just because something gets clipped it ends up in the, uh, in the rotation. Oh, that's not what I want. I don't want to cook. I want to drop stuff off. So, you know, a stream that has 20 clips doesn't mean there's 20 new clips going into the clip show. It means that I have 20 new clips to pick from and get the best material out of. Whoops. Do that. That's the one. Look alive. He's using a sniper rifle? Good job, Piper. I like that. Oh no, I'm using a sniper rifle.
Now, can't we do better than a postman's mailbag that only adds plus 10 to carry? Might have to go back to Sanctuary for one, but I'm sure we can do better than that at some point. Okay. So we should be done down here. Oh. Yeah, there's at least one more up there. Probably more than one. I don't think there's more than maybe two. Possibly three people left, but even that seems unlikely. I should have drank while I was back there. Oh well. Heavy and rusted is mud. Really, Piper? We have limited stim packs, you know. You could try to be a little more careful. Was not the one. Mm. Whoops. <laughs> when did I last save? I thought I was going to catch the edge there. Oh, whew. okay. 
Annoying, but not the worst thing ever. At least I had the foresight to save when I got back here. And now... There we go. How was that about being careful? Piper, say as I say, or do as I say, not as I do. on alert now. I think maybe we'll have to go hunt them down. There they are. What? Well, okay. Slow motion hunt time.
Hey, Space Vikings. How are you doing? Uh, did I forget to empty our inventories over there? That would explain a lot. How's your evening treating you? Well, it's an evening with some modded Fallout 4. Is another way of saying very well indeed. Alright, there's still somebody else. It's going good, Vikings. It's going good. Aside from the obvious, you know, carry capacity issues, but this is Fallout 4. I knew that going in. How are you not dead yet? How many times do I have to murder you? Hey, something's out there. Once more, apparently. Your new SSD came in. Had to order a separate drive just for DCS. Damn. So what kind of SSD did you go for? Honestly, it's worth it. When I set this up as a stream PC a while ago, I... Um, I set it up around SSDs, and I guess it's been a couple of years now, but uh, I later upgraded it so that I have a dedicated SSD just for game storage. It's a two terabyte sucker. And they're talking about SSDs reaching price parity or maybe even gaining it. Oh, hello. Maybe even gaining the advantage over... What? How are there... Where are you? What? Rude. Maybe even gaining price advantage over hard drives in 2023. So what I'd really love to do is try to hold out until a 4 terabyte M.2 SSD is a semi-reasonable price and pop that into the uh, PS5. 
I think the day is coming that that will not be a ridiculous wish. Samsung 870 Evo SATA SSD may need to get a 2 terabyte NVMe next year or if Black Friday is any good up here in Canada. Yeah. That leg's real beat up. I'm very curious about what's going to go on with Black Friday and drives. So I do need more storage. It doesn't have to be an SSD, but I need mass storage pretty badly with all the video work I'm doing lately. I've got pretty good console storage. I have that drive that was uh, thrown gifted to me earlier in the year for the PlayStation, so I'm good for consoles. But my PC, I just keep eating up more and more and more capacity. And it's not looking like that's going to get any better, so I need, like, um, you know, at this point, I would consider a 4 terabyte hard drive to be the bare minimum. That'll buy me months. But months go by pretty fast. So I'm probably looking more at something like a 6 to even 10 terabyte drive if I can get away with it. Really, it's going to depend on the deals. If I can only get a 4 or 5 terabyte drive, then... That would be a hell of a lot better than I've got now, and I may be overestimating my storage requirements. It's mostly because I'm downloading and storing my VODs as well, and those take up space, but... You know, breathing room is going to be a big thing. My one terabyte for my system is just fine, but games I filled up, yeah. Yeah, I've got the same. My system drive is a one terabyte NVMe SSD. And then I have like a two and a half inch internal SSD. It's not M.2 or anything. It's a SATA drive that I use for my games. You're in the way, sir. There you go. Did you see my storage? 21 terabytes on your media PC? Damn. That's what I need. Depending on your needs, could I make a suggestion? My media PC, I've got 6 times 4 terabyte drives in a RAID 5 configuration, so there's fault tolerance. I don't want to do that, though. I want to make sure that I... I, I, I don't want... It, it's, it sounds terrible. And I probably should. I just can't afford the redundancy. I want to be able to make use of all the capacity that I've got for stuff. <laughs> Repair bobblehead. Do I want to... That's not a special one, so yes, I'll do that one. Fusion cores permanently last 10% longer. Good. Okay. I don't upload all of my VODs, I can't. So eventually a backup system is going to be a requirement, but... We'll see how things go. I'm very encouraged by the changes I've made over the last six months or so to the stream and the things that I do behind the scenes and the results that I've been getting. I've been seeing upticks all over the place. So, I'm kind of encouraged that uh, I'm going to be able to get to the point where things aren't quite so tight. And then maybe I will be able to afford things like backups, <laughs> which would be nice. And, I, of course, I do have the option, if there's particular playthroughs that I think would be really valuable to save, 
Like, I, I did all the Monkey Island ones. Those ones I could delete from my local storage, because uh, I do have those on YouTube. Things like Horizon Forbidden West and stuff like that. If there are particularly good playthroughs that I really enjoyed, I could always put those on YouTube, but... It takes a long time to upload stuff like that. I would probably need to set up an account just for archival purposes for video. Uh, I don't need anything that fancy, Space Vikings. Just a USB hard drive would be more than enough for me. Ultra has a dedicated VODs channel. That's not a bad idea. Maybe I should consider doing that. At this point, I've been saving VODs for the vast majority of 2022. I have quite a collection of them at this point. Maybe... Yeah, maybe I would. No one needs it till the drive dies. Yeah, it's not so much... I'm, I'm under no illusions. I know I do need it. But just because I need it doesn't mean I can make it happen. <laughs> remember rad storms happening this frequently. I will admit, I, they look a lot nicer with this setup. I'm starting to not regret losing the Misty Pines thing. I mean, that looked really cool. The fog was great. But this Pilgrim ENB and stuff, it's more than just an ENB. It does other things too, but man, it looks amazing. I think it might actually look more grim and ominous than the Misty Pine stuff did. And I just noticed that I, once again, forgot the ad break. So I apologize to those of you who are just returning from having to sit through ads. On the plus side, while you did not miss out on all the clips because of the ads, the only thing you did miss out on is me trudging around, once again, at a really slow movement rate because I am overburdened in accordance with tradition. Is it even possible to not be overburdened in Fallout 4? That depends. If your name is Gord McLeod, then no. It is not possible. We're just going to deal with it this time, though, because I don't want to use another stim pack. Hmm. 
We gotta say I'm pretty pleased with tonight's progress. We cleared Bedford Station. We took Hangman's Alley. It's been a pretty good night. And that was like the first hour. So we're actually doing pretty good. I suspect Corvega will be a lot easier this time around too. Simply because I'm significantly higher level now than I was last time we attempted it. I'm better at stealth, better at combat, better at lots of stuff. I don't want to use stim pack, but I will use water because I can refill when we get back. Just so that I don't die before we get back. So for those of you that are here, I'm thinking about the the future of this month with our charity stream and my commitment to doing a bunch of crowd control stuff that's going to support the charity. Now my thinking is we're probably going to end up doing a lot of Skyrim because I will have other Skyrim incentives too. But there are a variety of games that are supported with crowd control that would make good charity events as well. Uh, one of them is City Skylines. I'm not sure how well that would work with the charity thing. I mean, it might go pretty good, actually. A lot of people seem to like it when I play that game. But I'm thinking about other games that I could do that I don't have, but which I could pick up. Like, um, there was that game that everybody was playing earlier in the year that I had sort of looked at and thought, hey, this looks cool, maybe I'll give that a try sometime, and I kind of thought about it in terms of October, which I didn't end up making happen. But V Rising works with crowd control now, as far as I understand. I was thinking that one might be pretty cool. You know, if you guys would be interested in seeing that, or if there are other crowd control games you know about that would be good. Skyrim, obviously, a good one. Rimworld, pretty good. Those are far from the only options, though. Fill all my bottles. got a lot of empty bottles, apparently. I wonder if I've still got all the ones I picked up out of that trailer. That's going to be a lot of water, which is really good. There we are. I should be using that one. Right leg. Shadowed and lightweight. 
the look at the attributes applied to some of these things I pick up more often. My opinion is probably very redundant as I'm most likely be able to be here a lot and have to stick to the VODs, but Skyrim and RimWorld do the trick for me. Okay. I wouldn't say it's redundant. It's valuable to know. Probably don't need to sleep that long. Let's go seven. Oh, boy. And this is why I need... Doctor Access. What illness have I got? We... Oh, God. Yeah, okay. We have to go to Diamond City, then. We are not heading inside Corvega with all those raiders when I'm taking 20% extra damage. That's just not healthy. Fortunately, the trip to Diamond City has just gotten much, much easier since we've got Overland Station and Hangman's Alley. Both as waypoints along the way. Uh, yeah, I think that'd be okay, Space Vikings. Don't worry, I never chat people. That's honestly one of the things I worry about. The other is that as a streamer, a lot of people do ask that, and Steam puts a hard cap on how many people you can add. So it can't be a free-for-all, just add everyone willy-nilly. They do, Anstara. People think Twitter is bad. I know, right? They are monsters. Actually, you know what? Let's save here. Okay.
Twitter is bad, and yet you can have as many friends as you want. Infinite friends. Ergo, friendship is bad. <laughs> so, does that mean that Steam, in fact, is good because they limit the amount of friends you can have, and friendship is bad? Steam is trying to protect us. Oh, yay. When we get to Hangman's Alley, I really need to check out the weapons bench. It's been some time since I tried poking at the upgrades I've got available. Now, mind you, it's also been some time since I upgraded anything in my perk list that would allow more options at the workbench. What? Lacrima, thank you so much. I was very confused there for a second. That popped the focus away from the game, but I appreciate it so much. What do you think the way Fallout looks, guys? I, I, I can only speak for myself, but I'm in love with the way this looks. It looks so good, to me at least. I hope you guys like the effects we've got going on here. It looks good, excellent. I like it more than Misty Pines. Okay, I think we're far enough away from the ghouls. Lacrima, I understand things, you know, you're kind of restricted in your time and mostly watching VODs and everything. If it is possible at some point to give me a heads up, I could always make sure that you are around for the first time that I play V Rising. I would love for you to be there to be able to catch that. It does look like a really good game. It's not often that vampire games catch my attention. I like a lot of classic vampire movies, but for some reason, games often put me off, but this one looks really, really good. Yes, yeah, Sunstara. So that's going to go into rotation. You know, if, if you can't... That's totally understandable, and that's totally cool as well. I can make a particular point, perhaps, of making sure that V Rising goes on YouTube, for example. You were going to gift it on Steam. There goes your plan. Sorry. Sorry, Space Vikings. I don't go for vampire games mostly except for Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, but that one, it's all about the story and RPG mechanics I like, but V Rising is actually quite some fun. Yeah, I've had my eye on it ever since it was so popular earlier in the year. It does look really good. I know Ashlina played quite a bit of it, and a number of other streamers that I hang out with regularly checked it out too. Oh, who do we have here? 
Which merchant are you? Oh, cricket. Hey there. Come on, come on. Get your guns here. Small booms, big booms. I got them all. What kind of stuff do you have? If they can chamber cock and spit out lead, then I sell it. I sell slashers and clobberers too, for those demons. But hot death flying faster than the speed of sound. Oh, my knees are getting weak just from thinking about it. I'll take a look. Sure. And there they are. Uh, Cricket's the best. Okay, I don't think I actually need to buy a lot of ammo from her. For once. Got a lot of good stuff, though. Oh, she's... Right, I forgot about that. She has Spray and Prey. Oh, man, and that's one of the best legendaries. Bullets explode on impact, doing 15 points area effect damage. I love sniper rifles with that effect. Hey, Vicious Press, how's it going? Military backpack. I'll grab that. Oh, no, oh, wait. There we go. Thank you, Cricket. Hey. Don't mind the choir. <laughs> okay. Here. There we go. How's that looking? That looks pretty good. That looks good. How goes the modded Commonwealth? It looks gorgeous. I love the mods that I've got. It's actually funny. I uh, just earlier today installed the Pilgrim Horror mod for Fallout 4. I didn't have it for October because unfortunately it this version of it wasn't available. I only knew about it because there were news stories circul circulating today about a new release of it, like kind of a 2022 remaster. And uh, it, it's a little weird that they would release it on November 4th, so close to Halloween, but on the wrong side of it. But I'm grateful because it's performing really well. It runs really well on my system. It looks great. And unlike the stuff that I tried to use all last month, it does not make Diamond City crash the game on me. So I'm very happy about that. Doc. Radiation poisoning is a common ailment, but we can cure just about anything. Catch me up, Doc. What's feeling off today? What can you tell me? Oh. Hurting all over, Doc. Grapes and bruises. Vampire is another Probably great vampire idea. game. Absolutely adore it. Well, the videos I've seen of it, never played it myself so far. I actually already have that one, like Rima. Vampire, it looks really good. I've been reluctant to actually start playing it, but that's more because I would have to be in a particular kind of mood to play it. I absolutely want to play it, and thanks to Humble, I do actually have it already. So that one... Who knows? Maybe next October. That might be a good one. No other complaints. All right. Don't ruin my hard work by dying out there. You can always try to figure something out via Discord. No harm in trying. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, if you search the Nexus Vicious for uh, Pilgrim, that's basically what I searched for, was just the word Pilgrim. There's not very many mods that match that, so it'll pop up pretty quickly and easily. You just have to search for the actual ENB and other stuff. Like It's just a single mod. It's got a couple of files that you install, and it should be good to go after that.
Okay. Back to Corvega. I'll have to empty Piper's inventory too, since I seem to miss out on doing that a lot. Okay, it looks like it's almost break time again, and uh, we're almost at the four minute mark. We're out four minutes from ads. I will try my best not to overlook it this time. I was going to say the ghouls might be gone. Jean! Jean, what are you doing here? <clears throat> hey there. You look like someone who could use a dog. Woman's best friend too, right? Why are you selling her? Oh, I don't want to. But I love dogs, and I gotta make a living somehow. So, I raise them, and so I'm always blue for weeks after I sell them. Then, I pick myself a new puppy and start all over again. You've got a deal. Oh, yeah. You sure? I mean, she's a great dog. Don't get me wrong. I just don't want to sell her to anyone who isn't going to take good care of her. I'll take good care of her. I'll take good care of her. Don't worry. Yeah. Ah. Okay. You look like you want to hear So, you really want to buy Yes, I really want to buy your dog. Okay. But you have some place for her to live, right? Sanctuary. I guess that'll have to be okay. Okay, go on. Is this your new owner? He's gonna give you a new home. Oh, you you be a good one. Uh, I uh, I gotta go. You take care of her, all right? Gene is the best character in this game. Take care of yourself, Gene. And say hi to Garrus for us. Make sure you won't get killed by accident in a super mutant attack. Exactly. You don't make pet ownership easy. We wanted a dog, not a set of bags for our guilt trip. <laughs> I'm impressed. It's actually not all that often that I succeed on that charisma check the very first time I run into Jean. So that's pretty good. But then again, I think I do have six points in charisma this time around, so that helps a lot. Add time. 
Ads are about to start, so I'm going to go take my break. I'll be back in a few minutes. And if you need to get some food or a drink or a snack, now's a really good opportunity. So I'll meet you back here in three and a half to five. Oh god, thank you, Greeny. <laughs> I'll keep that as a healing reserve. I just chose the one set with the... Uh... Oh god damn it, Greeny. <laughs> oh my god, I just emptied my frickin' inventory. How am I already overburdened again? Yes! <laughs> Journal entry added. Experience points received, 200. Oh, sorry, Jeb. Did I forget the minor matter of the parachute? Oh, shoot. Ah! Oh my god! Okay, where the heck did they hide the house? Is this the house here? Okay, this is not the house. Where do we live? What the heck? Did I take a wrong turn? Nope, not there. I am probably the first person in the history of... Oh, maybe it's this way. Ah, jeez. Oh, God. That was not the best plan. Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. Um. There you go. Still got meat. <laughs> At first, <laughs> you'll have no issue finding boars and bitter leaf on your way. Assuming you're as much a hunter gatherer as your clothing suggests. Thanks, Smildiff. I'll keep an eye out. So that's what gratitude sounds like. And don't <laughs> let anyone push you around, okay? If you say so. Helping the chef is the greatest of causes. It's true. It's true. What the hell? Oh. <laughs> oh boy. stuff and oops <laughs> uh, that was good Okay, I'm back. Oh my god, Anstara. 
had time. Wow. Thank you, Black Room. Thank you, Instara, I think. Your attention, please. A generous viewer has just gifted a few subscriptions at once. What the heck? Space Vikings, thank you so much for gifting subs to Hammer and Queen Thestral and Henna the Hermit. That is so kind of you. I really, really appreciate that. Well, we're at it. Okay, we can do that. You didn't get to gift V Rising? <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Oh, and I see what you did there. Have we... Wait a minute. Is that right? My god, it is right. Okay. We've hit our daily sub goal, too. That means I owe you guys a story time. Um, where's our terrible puns and dad jokes? <clears throat> and we did that one. Alright, guys. What does a computer do at lunchtime? Have a bite. There you go. Uh, it wouldn't be the worst time to do it, but I think what I'll do is... I'll do it after my next break. And that'll be the last break of the day. So, or at least in theory. Or maybe even since nowadays... I think this is the first time we've done story time since I've been more aware of the ad timing. Maybe what I'll do is I'll do story time after the next ad break. So we'll do clips. I'll swear I will try to remember. We'll do clips and then I will do story time and then we'll keep playing. I knew I would regret that. And yet people do it anyway. When's the next ad time? Uh, it looks like ads start in 22 minutes and 15 seconds or thereabouts. I'd make it closer to a minute, actually, Space Vikings, because I quite often notice three or four minutes out and I lose track anyway. Three minutes. It doesn't seem like a lot of time, but when you're streaming, it's an eternity. Or it's the blink of an eye. There's basically no in-between. You know what I completely spaced on doing, speaking of space? I was going to take a look at the weapons bench at Hangman's Alley, and I did not do that. We don't have a weapons bench here, do we? We do. Steel. Having a hard time believing that, oh god, I never got rid of these? Yikes. Having a hard time believing how difficult it is to find 
um, crystal in this game. I don't remember it being bad at all. Emergency, we're being raided. Alera, Eld, Jaduri, and all librarians report to hospitality stations immediately. Have library guards at the ready. Holy crap. Mo Wanders, Gooby Drooby, what's going on, folks? It's so good to see you. Thank you so much, Mo, for coming in with the raid. Guys, I'm sure by now, for most of you, Mo needs no introduction. He is an amazing guy. He's a mod over at Tea with Mandy's channel and a fantastic streamer and a longtime friend of this channel. So please make sure you go check him out. He does amazing artwork. He is an incredible artist and a great streamer. And you will not regret going and spending time with him. What were you playing tonight, Mo? I think I saw you start your stream up, actually. But I don't recall. Uh, no problem, Mo. You deserve every one of them. Okie Gator, I know your name. I've seen you around Twitch before. How are you doing? Welcome on in. Oh, right. Cyberpunk. Oh, my God. That's another game I have to get back to. That game is so good. I enjoyed it so much, even at launch on PlayStation. I had such a good time with it. Ugh. I, and now it's gotten so much better, and I haven't played it once. So I need to get back to that one. I hope that treated you well and went really well. Let me get you... No, no. No commands, I swear. There we go. There we go. It's much better, so you're in for a treat. Yeah, I'm kind of debating whether or not I should go back to it and continue my playthrough, or if I should go back to it and start a whole new one. We'll have to see. But uh, welcome in, folks. If you've never been here before, my name is Gord McLeod. I'm a variety streamer here on Twitch. I play a wide variety of mostly single-player story-driven games with mo excellent character and narrative development, as well as strategy games, sandboxy games, classic RPGs and retro adventure games. So if any of that sounds good, please feel free to hit the follow button. I do have a little bit of a video to welcome you in properly as well. Hopefully it won't scare too many of you away. Welcome on in, folks. Let's get the stream started, shall we? Whoa! Oh, crap. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, uh, runaway helicopter. Oh, damn it. Oh, no. No, no, no. No, no. Oh, shoot. 69 form factor. Aspect ratio. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, crap. Whoa. Yes, whoa. <laughs> okay, that... Hey, I have not, I have not looted that, sir. May still be coming, actually. Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> I didn't. That's a little bit of a preview of what you can expect around here. I'm gonna go get some food, but you'll be lurking. Absolutely love the Fallout vibes. Thank you, Mo. I'm trying out a new set of mods tonight. It's mostly the same as I've been playing with earlier in the year, but uh, I had to get rid of a few of my spookier, kind of autumn-y, terror-inspiring ones because they were causing issues with the game and uh, it was getting really unstable and crashy in Diamond City. And since this is a survival run, I can't really just avoid Diamond City. I need doctor services pretty frequently. And so Diamond City is the only reliable place to go for a doctor early in the game. That will change eventually. I will eventually be able to set up my settlements with uh, you know, permanent doctors of my own assignment. But until then, I'm kind of stuck with Dr. Sun. So having the game basically crash itself almost every time I go to Diamond City was a bit of an issue. But yeah, uh, I, I'm really loving the way it looks. This is maybe not the best time and place to provide an example, but um, we're about to go back to Corvega. We're kind of working on doing some stuff for the Ten Pines folks. So... As we travel, even just here, it actually starts to look a little bit better. And especially at night, if we get a rad storm, the rad storms look really amazing. But yeah, enjoy your food, enjoy your lurk mouth. Thank you so much for bringing your folks over. I really, really appreciate that. So I did a little... Oh, <laughs> it looks really good. Oh, crap, that's the wrong option. It looks really good, but I just remembered I turned off the audio so that we could do the clip show. So let's maybe... There we are. Put that back up again. So it has a chance of sounding fairly good, too. Although I don't really have very much in the way of audio mods. I need to correct that. I have one ambiance mod. And I'm honestly not entirely sure that I really like it, because it adds in lots and lots of extra plant in it. Well, a little bit of extra plant sound, but a lot of extra animal sounds. Unfortunately, the people who put the mod together don't really know a whole lot about the native wildlife in the Boston area. So every time I have someone in chat who's from the Boston area, and they hear rattlesnakes... <laughs> It's it it it's kind of amusing. Twenty two days, fourteen hours watching. Wow, Vikings! Thank you. That's a pretty good cumulative time. Sneaking up on three years, you are just a little over two and a half. Three will be here before you know it. What? What? You're supposed to be dead. What are you doing not being dead? It's against the rules. And you go away for five minutes to heal yourself of a, an illness and they just start respawning on you. Oh, crap. And she's not the only one either. You know what? That basically means I have no choice. We have to go back up there. Well, I don't have to, I suppose, but... It's a lot safer to do it that way, that's for sure.
No, there. Or, sorry, my mouse is getting away from me. There. Don't see anybody there. Where might you be? Oh, look at that, just over three years, Lacrima. Nice. confused. I don't see anybody. And logically, you would think that the first people to respawn would be the first people to die. I realize that's not a guarantee. That's the way it makes sense in my brain. So it shouldn't be the people that are harder to find, because they were the last ones to die. So I guess it was kind of a waste going back up there. On the other hand, I don't actually necessarily have to make sure the entire exterior area is cleared. I'm here to take out one very specific target. Not to completely destroy every bandit that exists in this area. Just a moment. There we go. Oh, 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 that's. I'm not sure about this. Maybe it's just. There. Oh, nobody there. Okay, it's evening out a little bit. I guess that was just assets continuing to load. It felt a little bit slow and drunk, which is a bit of a warning sign, because that's how the game would tend to feel before it crashed in Diamond City.
What the? Come and get me. Come on. What you waiting for, buddy? That's it. Come on. Come and get me. Good job, Piper. Hey, uh, coming through. Thank you. Whoa! Yeah. Oh, sorry, Piper. Oof. Maybe a restart? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Couldn't hurt, I suppose. Only a fucking coward hides. Starting to regret not buying more ammo from Cricket when I had the chance. Oh, am I over encumbered again? Guess I shouldn't be surprised. This is me, after all. Okay, guys, I'm going to pause for just a moment so the ads can play and people that have to see them won't miss anything. I'll be back in just a few. Then we'll do story time. Then we will resume. Oh, look at these graphical upgrades. Fancy.
it's pretty amazing the difference the rain makes in the controllability of the car. What a time to say that. <laughs> Rengi pack led, my god. Seriously, you can be pack led? Rigelian, Sarian, Tellarite, Trill, Vulcan, and Alien. Wait, what? Alien, as opposed to. <laughs> I wish I could remember how to... Oh, that'll... That'll work. <laughs> I was trying to remember how to Spartan kick. Oh my god. They have my Tartan. That's amazing. Hey, Mad. Interesting that they chose this particular Tartan of the Clan McLeod. At this point, I should probably be level 1 or 2. I'm level... what level am I, actually? 54. Jedi Duncan! And in the other corner, a relative newcomer to the Taris dueling scene. Emerging from the shadows with no history, no past, and no name. The Mysterious Stranger! That was not a sniper shot. Okay, we are back, and we're going to do story time. Now, um, Space Vikings. How familiar are you with these stories that we tend to read for story time? Do you have a particular story you would like to read? Or to have read, I should say. Thank you, Vikings. Thank you, Lagrima. For those of you not familiar with what story time is or what I'm talking about, when we hit our daily sub goal, I do story time, which is a short, like maybe five, ten minutes, <coughs> short story reading of something that I've written that uh, goes over a little bit of the lore of the Library of Lore itself. No preference? You like them all? Okay. In that case, let's start at the beginning, because it's been a while since we did one of these. So let me just get in here. We will do the very first one. Uh, there we go. Oh, there we are. Okay. So this is the Pelican Chronicles Volume 1, The Curious Case of the Buried Books. You did not, Hilary exclaimed. I refuse to believe it. Oh, I sure did, Jodori said matter-of-factly. The hint of a blush was absolutely not creeping over his slightly coppery, hard, dwarven features. You're telling me you, Mr. Unshakable, Mr. Stability himself, got caught in an unstable frame? Jodori sighed. There was extenuating circumstances. I was younger then, less experienced. See, I'd heard about these buried books being dug up. I should have known it involved digging, Hilary chuckled. I buried treasure and all. Well, I got me a reality stabilizer and went to this odd world with a tiny town. Pelican Town was the name, if I remember correct. Right beautiful place it was, but also the most unstable world I ever ran into. And I'll get to that. Right away, I see dwarven hands at work. No human would ever have noticed, but it stood out to me straight away. Carved and shaped stones around town, definitely of dwarf make. But not a dwarf to be seen, nor else. Just humans. He sighed a bit and lifted his mug from the table in the library break room. 
I expect if there were dwarves in the area, they were simply deeper down, he continued. But anyway, I started asking around town after the books. Nice folk, very welcoming of strangers. They weren't surprised to see one of your kind? Alara asked, then took a small nibble out of a stick of shortbread. No, though I didn't go out of my way to call attention to myself either. I think they just took me for a short man. Anyway, mostly they were pretty helpful, though the shopkeep fella, Pierre I think his name was. He seemed a bit put off when he found out I wasn't buying anything. And before you start, he said as Lara seemed about to interrupt. I know, even back then I knew enough to always try and buy when asking around after things, but this place? Set up to supply farmers and households. Nothing I needed, nothing I could use. Alara simply nodded, listening intently, and continued eating her biscuit and sipping on a steaming mug of coffee. So, I didn't get much from him. There was this one black fellow, though, Demetrius. Real smart. I figure he might have known what I was. He was doing studies out around town with his daughter, Maru. Neither of them seemed surprised when I asked about people digging up books around their town, and they gave me a couple of leads. A farmer who'd just arrived earlier in the year, and Gunther, curator of the local museum and library. Gunther was too busy to know much about it, but he'd asked the farmer to keep an eye out for stuff to fill the shelves with. The farmer had already donated a few books and museum displays and things. Gunther directed me to the farm, and that's when things got weird. So I went up to the farmer and my dimensional tracker went all blitzed up on me. The farmer wasn't one person. Not all at once, anyway. Kept phasing between different folk. Alara's eyes grew wide. I've heard of things like that. Individual people or places with only a weak connection to the world? Why, the farmer was a weak connector, and to a lesser extent, the farm itself was too. It was making me slip between frames of the world, going from one instance to another, where the farmer was someone completely different. A man in one to a lady to an, in another, then a weird blue person the next. Made my head spin. I'd never run into any such thing before. Alara snort laughed while sipping coffee, which only made her laugh harder. All right, sorry. I'm picturing you alone in a strange world with an improperly set stabilizer trying to work out why things are changing in front of your eyes. Hey, I said I didn't have much experience, all right, Jodori grumped. I know, she said. It's just hard to imagine you without experience. Hmm. Oh, we all gotta learn at some point. Anyway, after a while of trying to make sense of it, I finally thought to fiddle with my reality stabil stabilizer. It wasn't more than a minute, maybe two, before I found myself firmly in Farmer Gord's world. Alara's sharp, elven eyebrows rose. Farmer Gord? Interesting. Aye, a fascinating coincidence. He quieted a moment, glancing off through the library walls in the general direction of the head librarian's office. You know about the books, though. I just dug one up the day before I arrived. Said he always just knew where to look to find things. Books, historical artifacts, fossils, minerals. Ground always looked marked to him. That's much as it is for my people. Almost wondered if he had some dwarf blood in him. But it also made me wonder about the instability. I took a walk around the town, found the ruins of some old community center. Run-down place, but it was a bit unstable itself. The dimensional tracker marked it straight away. The building, but also clusters of little moving signals inside it, like rats or some such. It was locked, so I couldn't check inside. Not far outside of it, I found a bit of marked ground, just as Farmer Gord described, and in the ground, a book. An unwrapped, unprotected book, on a rainy day, not getting wet, not getting dirty. It was like nothing I'd... I'd never seen anything like it. I haven't since, neither. Alero was tidying up her dishes. It was nearly time to get back to work. The Library of Lore's bookkeeping wasn't going to do itself, unfortunately. She paused. Mysterious buried books appearing completely clean and intact, regardless of the conditions they're found in, associated with an area of interworld instability. Yoduri nodded slowly, eyes sparkling and a hint of a smile on his face. She snapped quick, slender fingers. They're a symptom of that same instability. The dwarf nodded. That's my best conclusion. Probably happened that in a wide band of nearly identical alternate worlds over time, a few books were lost. But these worlds hold unusual magics and that touch of instability. The lost books bled over and appear throughout the whole band of worlds. And they can repeat, too. I went back a few times. Farmer Gord reported finding several of the same volumes a few times each over the next couple of years. A fascinating story, Jod. Thank you for sharing it. I'm certainly glad you closed the book on that one. I'll air a dead band. Jodori gritted his teeth and managed to respond with nothing but a grunt of deep spiritual pain until they were back at their desks in the library's financial offices. And there you go. That's story time. Okay. Thank you, Vikings. I really do have to write more of them, though.
It's now officially been more than a year since the last time I wrote one. Till they lose us. <clears throat> Thank you, Lagrima. Thank you, Ansara. I'm so glad you guys actually enjoy that. Even with so few stories to read, I will have to make a special effort to write more of them. Seeing that before. You look like you're about ready to topple over. There's a storm here. You may lose power, which is rare because you're on a hospital grid. Interesting. Not in a good way. I hope your power remains stable. Something in that room, it's really not liking that. Oh, I'm starting to question whether it was actually the pines. Not so sure that it was anymore. Oh, that's interesting here. With the scope narrowed in, it's fine. That's not good. Try to get out of here with my legs broken. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice root function. A bit late, but figured it would be good to redeem some tokens on that one. Yeah, I like that one. It doesn't get used a whole lot, but this is exactly the kind of game that I have it for. Ugh. Oh my god. We're all the way back this way? Did I? I, I can't believe I didn't save. Oh man. 
I mean, I guess technically speaking, I didn't actually miss out on much. This would have been on the way back. I think. Wow. Okay. I deserve that. I'm an idiot. I saved on the way to Diamond City, not on the way back. Okay. Well. Ah, uh, that means that we lost our run-in with Jean, too. Honestly, that might be the best, though. I sent the dog to the wrong stronghold settlement. I really should have sent it to Oberlin Station because they have no security rating whatsoever. And it's the only settlement I've got now that actually has people other than Sanctuary. Sanctuary is doing good though. They've got food, they've got water, they've got security, they've got basically everything they need. So I didn't really have any business sending the dog to stay with them. They're already pretty good. Oberlin really could have used it. Dark him. it's been a while. How are you doing? It's good to see you. I'm just going to chalk it up to the occasional necessary reminder that, yeah, saving your game is actually a thing that you need to do. Well, I appreciate you stopping in. I hope things have been going well for you. Always fun when you lose half a day of progress because I kept forgetting to save. Yeah. I should know better, this being survival mode and all. You just get so used to games auto-saving all the time, or, you know, auto-checkpointing at least. I shouldn't have to worry about them very much. Actually have mods to enable auto saves and survival. Too risky. Fallout 4 is stable for a Bethesda game, but it's still a Bethesda game, and with mods, all bets are off. Fair enough. I prefer to stick to the rules, although I do bend them just the tiniest little bit. I have a mod that allows me to save at any bed without having to actually sleep. Cricket, you're back! Excuse me. Better buy my big guns now, because you bet your ass your enemies will. So glad we found you. What kind of stuff do you have? If they can chamber cock and spit out lead, then I sell it. I sell slashers and clobberers too for those maniacs that like it up close. But hot death flying faster than the speed of sound. Oh, my knees are getting weak just from thinking about it. All right. Let's see what you've got. And there they are. Okay, this time I... Ooh, she's got more of it this time, too. I'm going to buy all the 308. Oh, that's expensive, but I can do it, so I'm going to. Ugh. 
But she... Oh, nope, never mind. She does still have the military backpack. Thank you very much. Hey, at least it's hey, honest work. Shoot. Probably have something you can use. Okay. Now, if I remember correctly, she had too much crap. I have to take a couple things, then I'm going to take that and give her that. She can use that. Oh, thank you, Darkhem. I'm so good at forgetting to save once a game has sucked me in. Yep. I know the feeling. Probably stop in, give Yafim a little bit more money, and save right here in Diamond City. Just for the heck of it. Unfortunately, the experience in Gore Vega tells me I might actually have to keep looking for the culprit. I was so sure it was Misty Pines that was making the game do that. But clearly there's something going on in general interiors. Because this, I mean, it's... It's kind of an interior space, the way they've got it set up. Doc. Radiation poisoning is a common ailment, but we can cure just about anything. It's understandable, though, Darkhem. It's really good at recognizing terms. It's not so good at recognizing context. Yeah. Take a look at me, Doc. No. Go over your symptoms for me, one at a time. Hmm. Hurting all over, Doc. Uh, you look fine, but oh, wait. Yeah, that's gonna need to be set back in place. Let's get started. All done. Any other complaints? No, no more giant syringes needed. No, more done. All right. Don't ruin my hard work. Promises. Need a room? Is that you? Oh. Hey, your theme. Had we haven't scared you off yet. Need a room? Yes, please. All right. Here's your money. Room two is yours. Enjoy. Just need to save. So now I've got to try and figure out what's different about the interior of for Vega that would not be true of, say, Fallon's basement here in Diamond City, Diamond City itself, or the Dugout Inn. I mean, for starters, I mean, unless you actually are counting this as an interior space, and it only sort of kind of is. For Vega's an awful lot bigger. I don't know. I'll have to look over the mod list, I think. I was so sure I'd nailed it, too. It's a little disappointing. Also kind of suggests that maybe doing the Corvega mission is not the best idea for today. Hmm. Might have to do some other stuff. Maybe I could just go on a, an exploration mission and try to find other settlement sites. Get all the way out to Taffington Boathouse, maybe. You should get inside the city. No, I think I'll stay out.
I assume whatever is making everything gray is dismal is carrying into some interiors. Uh, this is an ENB. And weather mod. The weather shouldn't be carrying into interiors, but the ENB effects definitely are. Or definitely should, anyway. But I was having this problem before I started using the ENB, so it's not that. That's new as of today. The problem with interiors, certain areas being, you know, slow and unstable. Although Corvega, I was in there a while. It didn't actually crash on me. It just got slow, and it was mostly that one room. Quite certain you'll be able to find a settlement that needs your help. You'd be surprised. There's only, I guess, technically three settlements that could possibly need my help. Sanctuary has people. I forgot earlier about, um... What's the farm? The one right by uh, Red Rocket and Sanctuary. The Abernathy farm. That one's got people that could potentially need help. And Overland Station has two people that could probably be the most likely one to need my help. But I've got a few other settlements, but none of them have actual people because I can't find any crystals, so I can't build radio towers. Oh, Fred O'Connell. Okay, well, that's one of the doctors we can run into. I was really hoping we might run into Jean again. Not to be, though. I had without mods the theory that it's my ability to always carry tons of crap with me. It was much. It was always much better or no issue at all when I emptied my inventory beforehand, but that's been ages ago. Not sure if that meanwhile got patched out or not. How much stuff are you talking about? What the heck? Patriotic. Thank you for the hydrate, neck stretch, and raise the desk. Okay, we can do that. It's not a bad time for it near the end of the stream. Still got another hour or so, but uh, I'll keep the desk up as long as I can. Just pause that and we'll hydrate. Scratch. And, uh,. How's it going, Patriotic? It's good to see you. Okay. It's midnight and I'm starting to fade, so I'm going to head to bed and leave a lurk. Thank you so much, Vikings. I really appreciate it. Have a fantastic evening yourself. I always had to slowly walk and break my legs. Yeah. But I'm just wondering because there... I mean, a lot would depend on the hardware you were trying to run it on, how much RAM you had available to you, and... The sheer amount of things that you had available because 
I'm thinking of the development of Fallout 76 and the item capacity restrictions they put, the, the carry weight limits they put on characters and the storage limits that they put on camps. Because the Fallout 76 engine is just a somewhat upgraded version of the Fallout 4 engine tuned for multiplayer. But because it was the same engine, it's possible with Fallout 4 to overload certain segments of the game, like, you know, individual cells that are loaded, different areas, like for a settlement, for example. If you store really, 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 really high amounts of stuff and you make it really, really built up. I t I've had this happen before with Starlight. Uh, Star Starlight Drive-In where I built it up so big and stored so much stuff that I did cause the game to lag in that area. And so I'm not sure how easy it would be to do that with just stuff that you're carrying on your character's inventory. But I certainly wouldn't say that it's impossible. I think you absolutely could do it if you were making your character files so big with so much stuff that your RAM couldn't handle it. You could cause the game to lag out just by carrying too much. It would have to be a lot, though. Not sure to how many items that translates, but I literally picked up every bit you could. So many things with low weight equals many items. Yeah, if you really, really, really got up there. I'm talking on the order of tens of thousands of things, then it wouldn't surprise me too much. Okay. Let's get back on the road, but now we're going to do different roads. We'll go along here, and we're going to start heading over towards the further end of the map. Along the east-west line. Jean! <clears throat> hey there. You look like someone who cleans the dog. And his best friend too, right? You've got a deal. Oh, yeah. You sure? I mean, she's a great dog. Don't get me wrong. I just don't want to sell her to anyone who isn't going to take good care of her. I'll take good care of her. Don't worry. You know what? I changed my Aw. I don't think I want to sell it just yet. Alright, Gene. You keep your dog. But you'll be back. Where'd the body go? Where did the body go? Shoot. Crap, I was counting on that for lunch. Oh well. Uh, 
Oh, right, this bit. Forgot about this bit. Is it just the mole rats up there that are causing the issue of what's going on? I don't want to shoot stuff because I'm going to kill the wrong people or things or both. Nope. Every time you just casually brush up against or jump onto a car, why is that, Darkham? That's bad news for the other settler. Because the admittedly rare now physics bug that just kills anything that touches a vehicle which has loaded incorrectly. Oh, is that what does it? It doesn't just automatically oh, whoops, kill though. Sometimes it just wounds you really, 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 really badly. But it's always been rare enough that I never... Oh, Gene, you're back again. I told you you'd be back. We just can't get rid of this guy now. Hey there. I changed my mind. She's not for sale. Oh, interesting. Okay, so he didn't respawn. He's just wandered back down this way again. Not murder Gene. Rude. Gene to the rescue. Thank you, buddy. Good to know that even in the Fallout universe, you can always count on Garrus. Even if he is a lot harder to get used to and uh, get along with than he used to be. Confused. Where'd our friend the settler go? I'm not seeing a body. Oh, never mind.
It's the same bug that made Oblivion unplayable for me on launch day, just kind of casually lurking in Fallout 4's cars for some reason. Piper? Some help you were. Moral support. It's not a bug, it's an Easter egg. Wow. Worst Easter egg ever. Hey, Jared, how goes? Shoot, I forgot to... <laughs> yeah. Okay. So much for that idea. Dropping a lurk for a doggo walk. If I'm back before you end, I'll say hi again then. No problem, Jarek. Enjoy the walk. At least all we have to do is get back up to uh, the drive-in. We haven't gone too far. The slow walk of shame. I don't get the shame part. Slow walk, absolutely. This is an absolute source of pride, though. All that for needs shopping trolleys you can fill up with all the crap you pick up and then push around with you. That would be amazing. The interesting thing is, that's effectively what Daggerfall did have. He has one named Piper. True. The Honorable Walk of the Looter Kings. Precisely.
Actually, yes, since I can't get any slower okay. anyway. Just give me back all that crap I gave you. That'll make it easier and a bit faster when I offload all this crap. Oh, and I have to redo breaking all this stuff down. Daggerfall was a very special game ahead of its time, and I sincerely hope that nobody ever makes another game in its image. It really needs to have more games made in its image. They just need to take the better parts of it instead of the other stuff. There, wait, there's contents in these speakers? It's weird. I agree that in a lot of ways it was ahead of its time. I think... It suffers horribly. I actually streamed it a few times uh, a while back, Darkham. It was the first time I'd ever played it. Or at least it was shortly after the first time. I played it a little bit off stream and then I decided, okay, I have to stream this. And then I decided that I hated the dungeons. And since the game is all about the dungeons, I didn't continue with it. But there's a lot of stuff about it that I really loved. I really loved the way they used the um, procedural generation and I think they need to do a lot more of that kind of thing and it kind of sounds like they're going to with Starfield which I'm really excited for. Just got to, you know, not replicate what they did before, but actually try to make it better in the, the good ways. It's the procedural generation that they did. It was ahead of its time, but it was also not the best. Could have been a lot better. But pretty good for the time. They're old school, yes. Well, yes, it is precisely why they were so bad, Darkim. But that doesn't mean procedural generation itself is bad. It just means that procedural generation... It was ahead of its time, but it can be done a lot better these days. You just need to design it better than they did. And... I'm not saying that they did a bad job. I'm saying that they did the best job they could with the technology and the hardware platforms the game was designed to run on of the time, you know? So if they were to do it again these days, they wouldn't have to be as restricted as they were that time back then. They would be able to do a lot better. There we go. Let's just go 12 hours. Hey, JH, how's it going? Yeah, better, faster, stronger, and hopefully smaller. Bethesda's procedural work is not really advanced, though. I... Beth Skyrim and Fallout aren't better, in my opinion, for their procedural content. I'm going to have to completely disagree with you there, but that's fair enough. That's a subjective matter that... You know, there's no objective response there. I like the Radiant Quest system. I think there still is a lot of room for improvement with it. 
I would just like to see them do it. I don't want them to say, oh, well, that could have been better. Therefore, we should never work on it and try to improve it. We should just abandon it and say, nope, that was a terrible idea. That's the worst thing you can ever do. You don't give up on an idea just because it didn't work out. You uh, evaluate it first and see, well, okay, why didn't it work out? Are there things we could have done better? Are there things that we couldn't have done better at the time that we could do better now that we're working with so many more powerful systems? And I think the answer there is there's a metric buttload they could do that's a lot better than what they did. It was a lot like a brand new D&D dungeon master with their first graph paper deciding to make a super crazy big, big amazing dungeon just by sketching it out forever and then their players hate them. Yeah. And I will also freely admit a large part of my distaste for the dungeons and the size of the dungeons is because of stupid decisions I made when I built my character. Like going with a character that was not a strength build and was barred from ever using leather armor. Therefore, I had to wear heavy armor. Therefore, I had virtually no carry capacity. Therefore, any time I picked anything up, I had to return to the entrance to the dungeon. That's entirely on me. That's not a Bethesda problem. <laughs> I like the Skyrim dungeons way more than the Dagger Falls ones. Yes, because the Skyrim dungeons were designed. And they were kept small. Now, you could do procedural generation that feels designed. You would do that by, you know, designing a whole bunch of areas and then using procedural generation to put them together with rules that keep it from getting out of hand which is a lot harder to do than it is to say and describe. But it can absolutely be done. It has been done. A lot of games these days use that kind of stuff. It sounds like Starfield is going to use some extent of that. Remains to be seen how well it works out. I'm hopeful. What's nearby? Oh, junkyard dog. Okay. It's like if they had a tile set and just threw it on the ground and said, that's a dungeon. Also, the objective is technically in it, but behind 14 secret doors and also inaccessible. Yeah. Their design philosophy has changed a lot since those days, though. If they were going to use procedural generation to build new stuff, it's a virtual certainty that it would end up being quite different than the Daggerfall stuff. Dova Keen, how's it going? Welcome on in. Starfield will have to be extensively procedural. The scale they've suggested exists and it is simply not achievable without it. Yes, I hope that is correct.
This is starting to bring home to me just exactly how much I don't remember areas of this world. Which is really exciting, honestly, because it's almost like exploring it again for the first time. Except that I'll end up remembering it pretty quickly. Oh, wait a minute. This is the hospital, isn't it? Which means... Super muties. There they are. While I was playing Daggerfall, I came across a grate that I couldn't get past, which I needed to, and I would would have had to spend a literal hour backtracking and exploring the literal square mile of corridors I'd already explored. On that day, I decided that using console commands to remove clipping is at times right and good. That's hard to argue with, Anstar. It's a minor monsoon? Oh god. That's fun, Jarek. Oh, I was already just staring at him. Don't don't worry, Darkim. That part I remember. Note the little blinky light there. That would be him. I love that Piper saw you fire your weapon, a tactical nuclear blast, and had nothing to say, but we're not alone here. I mean, she does live in the wasteland. That might seem spectacular and unusual to us. But Piper has seen some crap. Uh, oh, actually, that's a very good call, Lagrima. Thank you very much for that. Ads start in about 33 seconds. So this is probably a good time for me to take a little clip break. And I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Once the ads are done, so people don't miss stuff. Good luck, Uthkurt. <laughs> Um... Ooh. Oh boy. Oh! Oh, that's... No, no, Uthgird, no. Sit back and enjoy the ride. <laughs> oh boy. Um... A little bit of a bumpy road with dragon skeletons everywhere. No problem.
I prayed to the gods, and when they pulled it out, there you were. What is going on in the background there? What was that explosion? Nice. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> hey, maybe you can use your saber to make another bridge. What an idea. That's wacky. Who to thunk? <laughs> Great, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> wow. There we go. And I'm back. Daggerfall's procedural generation was simply being asked to do too much. It built the world and the dungeons and the quests. It placed all the loot and the quest objectives and the enemies on the fly. Um, now, the world and all of that kind of stuff, they were preset. They used procedural generation to set them, but it wasn't doing that on the fly. They loaded that in. A lot of the other stuff, like the NPCs and the quests and all that, that, that was on the fly. They did do some hand tuning of some of the locations and stuff as well, but not nearly as much as would have been ideal. Thank you, Anstara. Thank you, JH. But yeah, the, the, the basic process of doing procedural generation hasn't changed at all, Anstara. It's just that these days, computers are a lot faster at doing that kind of thing, so it can go through all the procedures and uh, the random generation and the assembling of things a lot quicker and so you can do a lot more with it but it's still up to the people designing the system to design it well so that it accounts for all the little things like you know with Daggerfall they could have designed it so that the dungeons weren't a billion miles away and that the levers did give some indication of what kind of function they had and that they had some uh, you know, restrictions in place so that a lever that controls a door on one side of the dungeon isn't all the way on the freaking other side of the dungeon and unlabeled and dependent on another thing. Like, you know, all this kind of stuff, it has to be thought of in advance. Otherwise, the randomness can cause weird stuff, which is exactly what happened in the case of Daggerfall. So, it really comes down to the same thing that defines a well-made layout that's not designed by computer. It has to have a good designer behind it and good coders. Even when you're making the computer do the design work, there's still ultimately a human responsible. Thank you, Lacrima. The main story and the main story dungeons were entirely handmade and non-procedural, yeah. I would imagine they would hit time limits on how much they could tweak and fix afterwards. Well, I I couldn't speak to that. That's very possible. Too random is almost never a good thing, JH. There needs to be some kind of sensibility to it, otherwise it just isn't going to feel right. And that's what kind of started bugging me. like. The thing that really started putting alarm bells in my head was when I would enter a dungeon at ground level in Daggerfall and be faced with an underground corridor going upwards. That's just, I mean, if that were one of the only problems, I could have dealt with it. But I knew we were in the olden primitive times of procedural generation by that point.
Yeah, that's 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 true, Darkham. That game was immense. And that's actually another problem I had with it, is that it is immense. But the problem is, and where Bethesda's really gotten so much better, is that it was immense without real meaning. It's empty size. Like, yes, okay, it has one of the largest land masses ever, you know, available to players to explore on foot. But there's nothing fun to find in the vast majority of it. It's only tiny little pockets that you can fast travel to. So what's the point of most of that stuff even existing? This is why games tend to be a bit smaller in scale. Too random? Oh yeah, well you can't be too random for, I guess you could be too random for security stuff. You have to actually be able to solve it legitimately, but uh, yeah. Randomness in gaming and randomness in security, two very, very different subjects. Oh no, it's no more possible now than it would have been at that time, JH. The game is just too big. Can't spend two days randomizing. Yes, exactly. Whoops. Junkyard dog. So you are not a threat. You're friendly. Wait a minute. Is there another settlement just up here? There can't be, can there? Let's go up this road. Man, it's kind of weird to realize that I don't remember this game as well as I like to think that I do. You'd think after 3,000 hours I'd know the map like the back of my hand still. Turns out I only know certain key areas like the back of my hand. The rest of it's like the back of my head. It's almost like I've never seen it. But I'm pretty sure there's a like a greenhouse area up here. Or not a... maybe a... is it a greenhouse? I think it's a greenhouse. There's a farm. And beyond that, there's super mutants. It's immense in the way that Elite Dangerous is immense or No Man's Sky. Lots to see, but nothing new to see after a pretty short period of time. Yeah. And I have similar issues with the way that Hello Games has done procedural generation in No Man's Sky. Both Daggerfall and No Man's Sky are great examples of how you can do fun stuff with procedural generation. But they also kind of showcase the limitations. And at the same time kind of hint at the promise that could be done with it. Like... <laughs> There's so much they could do with procedural generation in No Man's Sky. Wait, this is not what I thought it was. Why is there a plane wing there? Is it further down that way? What? This really is like having a brand new game. This is kind of cool. I vaguely remember this plane. I don't remember the story reasons for it to exist or the potentially procedural generation stuff. I know there's something or other that can send you here.
The CMB is throwing me off. The fact that a tiny team like Hello Games are able to make No Man's Sky at all, even in the state it launched in, is borderline miraculous. Yeah, you're not wrong. You don't like the EMB? I love it. I'm probably going to keep using it for a while. I have to apologize for that. I I think this is amazing. I get very tired of ENBs and everything that make, especially games like Fallout, just look absolutely gorgeous all the time. And there's nothing wrong with that. It just gets very samey after a while. And I spent most of October trying to make Fallout a scarier, grittier place. Well, not really grittier. It was already pretty gritty. Well, that's just creepy. In our hands anyway. Wow, okay. You don't see that every day. Don't necessarily dislike it, it's just made the game grayscale, so I'm occasionally uncertain of where we are despite being deeply familiar with the map. That's... It, it, it's... yeah, well... That's kind of what I like about it. Because it is making it harder to navigate, and... That's making it very refreshing for me. I have played this game for like 3,000 some hours. <laughs> Being this unfamiliar with it, what everything looks like is... It, it's very refreshing. Nice. It's very novel. We got all of them. <coughs> yeah. I killed him so quickly, J.H., he didn't realize he had to fall down. I was going to say before I was interrupted by the mystery voice. Uh, it might not even necessarily be the ENB. I mean, it could be. Oh, that's expert. I'm not going to get that one yet. I'm also using a mod called the forest, or a forest rather which really dramatically changes the way the uh, vegetation in the world looks. And it makes it a lot harder to see areas, and it makes them look exceptionally different. First time I used it, I found it difficult to navigate too, even though I hadn't been on break from the game for nearly as long as I am now. Or have been. Oh, there we go. Massive fuel fire. I think you may have more time in this game than I have in Bethesda's entire catalog. Well, I certainly have more time in this game than I have in any other Bethesda game. The next highest one would no doubt be Skyrim. I don't think I have a thousand hours in Skyrim. 
Although, after the last playthrough and the new one that I've just started recently, I'm probably getting close. If you add up the time I had in the original Skyrim and in the Special Edition. I'm just realizing that I very, very rarely ever come to this area of the game. Correct, JH. This is not Skyrim. I don't have a multi-companion mod for Fallout. Although, I should probably check and see if they do. It would be fun to wander around with Piper and with McCready and... I'm not sure who else I would want to take, really. Piper, McCready... Maybe Curie? What's the other one? The, the Irish girl. She kind of annoys me at first, but she grows on you, and I eventually ended up liking her. Kate, yes. It took me forever to warm up to Kate. Is that I'm just kind of worried that we're going to get to a part of the game that suddenly we're faced with assaultrons and I'm not going to be ready for it. Oh. There they go. Didn't warm up to her until after I did Vault 95 with her. If Vault 95 is the one where you go and it's the one where they were doing the drug experiments, then yeah, my experience was very similar. feeling that I'm making a massive mistake. Wait, Gus? Okay, first of all, Gus is not hostile. This looks both familiar and concerning. Why do I feel like I know this girl? Well, hello. Are you buying or just in the way? He's a shopkeeper? Sure. Let's take a look. I got all sorts of stuff. What? Wow. I'll take your bobby pins. Thank you, kid. Noted. I'll say, Darkim, I think I maybe 
maybe have run into her once. And I wouldn't swear to that. That might have been my first encounter with her. Where are we? Oh. Wait, what? I... <laughs> I could have sworn we were going east, not south. Okay, I guess we're not getting close to the... the forged guys, then. Might be just as well. Yeah, that's Junkyard Doug again. Like I said, it's kind of novel being this turned around. Yeah. In a lot of ways, it's like playing the game again for the first time. South details. Well, I mean, the road that I was concerned about, there's there's usually an encounter with an Assaultron. The fact that we went south instead of east means I am probably a lot less likely to die to an Assaultron. So, might just be a little detail, but it's a fairly important little detail. Have a good night, Ansara. Thank you so much for hanging out. I do appreciate it. Oh, okay, and right now we're just back. We're back at the hospital. And now I'm not sure if I want to go, because I'm kind of tempted just to go and blow up the Suicider again. But if I do that without the intention of committing to the battle... It's kind of a waste, because it's... Not looking so hot. Well, thank you, Piper. Um, him and all of his nuclear material and stuff will despawn by the time I go back again. I think we'll start making our way back at this point. Much fun as it would be to tangle with that super mutant again. His friend has grenades. How close am I to dinging upward again? Oh, 
Oh my god, look at that. I am... I'm... Oh god, I'm right there. Exactly, Dark Kim. I'm not sure I really want that present, but I'm so close to 12. Ah, uh, hell. You know what? No. No, no. We'll save the mutants for later. I know what we're gonna do. Oh, good. Radstorm. Beautiful. Actually, I think this might be the first Radstorm I've seen with this EMB during the day. We're gonna go back, we're gonna drop stuff off at the drive-in, and then I have not yet done the battle with the raiders at the little, uh, you know, the diner. Rescued the shop lady's son and all that. We'll do that. That'll give me a new merchant I can deal with, and I might be able to buy the crystal that I need. I intend to, Lagrima. I just intend to do it safely in a container at a settlement where I'm not going to lose it. to hope that when I get back to that uh, first checkpoint near the junkyard with the mole rats, we don't run into a behemoth, because that would be fun. And I know that's a thing that occasionally happens right there. <sighs> Hopefully that's a level-gated encounter and won't happen at my level. Although I am high enough level that technically I think I could have finished the game by now. Oh, do we have ads in progress? Okay. Yeah, actually, you know what? <laughs> if anything interesting happens, I will stop and run clips for the ads, but right now, we're just walking. I'm gonna keep walking in the interest of getting back there and doing more fun stuff faster. If a behemoth does show up, I will pause and I will run clips. disappointed otherwise. I'm so glad you guys are on board with my policy of never dropping anything if I can at all avoid it. Okay. 
Okay, so far so good. It's fine, Piper, don't you worry. soon more clear. If I die from a behemoth from behind, then we'll know otherwise. Welcome back, folks. I apologize. I missed the start of the ads. I decided not to run clips while they were playing because, frankly, all you missed was me walking really slowly anyway. I determined that if something really interesting had happened, I would simply pause the game, run clips, and let you guys catch up with the fun stuff. But... No fun stuff was to be had this time anyway. Did I blame you for playing a game the way I play mine? Fair enough. Very fair. Waiting to see what monstrosity has spawned here. Hoping it's not Meyer Lurks. If I'm lucky, maybe nothing has had time to spawn at all, although I'm used to things spawning every time I walk through here almost. Oh, perfect. It's lunch. Or not. Never mind. hit the wall, didn't it? Damn it. Real bad move. Ha! That was all we needed. I don't even have to do the diner. Although I probably will next time. Just because I really need crystal and I'm running out of other ways to get it. Uh, let's see... Grounder 2 might be good. Sneak 2 would definitely be good. Let's go Scrounger. I love finding ammo. Rarely pass any of the encounter points even minutes apart without something new spawning. Yeah. Did I? Hey, what can I do? Help yourself. Damn it! I walked all this way and I could have dumped stuff on her. With all the reloading and dying and all that, I've uh, kind of lost track of... Oh. 
And all that was for nothing. She still ran out of space before me. Well. She may not be sworn to carry our burdens, J.H., but she is a nice person. not going to go out of my way to get rid of more stuff. I'll just tidy up a little bit as we head over. Broken down and stored in the workbench, yeah. Alright, come on, Piper. should probably do nicely. Probably could have done 14. Nothing wrong with a nice rusty old car frame to decorate your settlements with. True. Not done. There we go. Now. Hey, what you got for me? Metal light armor. Realize we were starting to find metal yet. Okay. So 
So we made some unexpected progress today. I really didn't think we would be finding our way over to the Skylines, Skylanes Flight 1981. That's really close to Ten Pines and Outpost Zamonja. Huh. Okay. Yeah, so we were making our way down, down here. I was no doubt thinking of a farm that's up in this area. I'm a little confused about the exact layout now, but it's got to be something like that. For now, it's getting to be after 4 o'clock. I need to do some stuff before I can head off to bed, so I think... We are going to go find somebody to raid. Get my list of awesome folks up. Thank you for being here, JH. Thank you, Lacrima. Thank you, Anstara. Thank you, Darkham. Thank you, everybody. Been a really fun night. Really glad to get a chance to play Fallout. I was disappointed that we got to do so little of that over October with the crashing. Uh, I still apparently have some troubleshooting to do, but it's better than it was. I had a lot of fun tonight, so uh, let's see who else can go visit this evening. Thank you, Mad. It's so weird that you stop at 10 a.m. for me. It's 4 a.m. for me. Actually, it's 20 after 4, or close to it. So until I have to adopt an entirely new schedule, that's just the way it's got to be. There's a lot of people on tonight, but very few of them are people that I know particularly well. Itre is on, though. She is in just chatting and has Pokemon cards in her subject line, so I don't know what's going on in her chat. He with Mandy is playing a Plague Tale Requiem, which honestly I would kind of like to avoid due to spoilers, since I'm enjoying the first game for the most part so much. Ash Monster is playing the new God of War game. I think it's the new one. It just says God of War. It doesn't say God of War Ragnarok. Maybe she's playing the old one. What if Julia is playing I'm on Observation Duty 4? That looks like it's about it, really. It's Itre, Mandy, Ash Monster, or Julia. You'll stay for the raid? Excellent. It's about time you head off to bed yourself. No problem, Darkim. Nine here. Winter time since last weekend? Yeah, Jarek. Thanks for the stream. It's been wonderful to be here again. Really missed your streams? It's good to have you here again, Lacrima. You've been missed. God of War 2018 is high on my list since Ragnarok is coming. Well, I have no objection whatsoever to going and visiting Ash Monster. She is an awesome streamer. I know her through Tea, of Man Tea, Tea with Mandy and Mo Wanders. Uh, she is a friend of theirs. And quickly becoming a friend of mine. She's a wonderful streamer. Really good vibes. And uh, looks like she's playing God of War on Give Me a Challenge difficulty. So maybe she is playing the first game in preparation for Ragnarok. One of these days, I, I need to play through that myself. That game actually came with my PlayStation 4. So I've had it since, what, November 2019? And I've never played it. So let me just load up her channel. I do have a little bit of an ad to sit through. But while I am waiting for that to be done, I will get you guys her link. There we go, and raid call. 
Here at the Library of Lore, we use Library Raid. You've been bookmarked with the Heart Emote and the Wave Emote of the channel if you are a sub. If you're not a sub, you can use the Twitch Raid and the Tomb Raid emotes. In either case, sub or non-sub, I do encourage you to use any emote you feel is fun and appropriate for a raid. If you have emotes of your own that you'd like to use, maybe emotes from another streamer or from Twitch themselves, feel free to copy the raid message, arrange the emotes you want to use the way you want them to appear. It'll all be good in my book. So let's get over to Ash's channel. It does look like she's actively playing. She's not off on break or anything like that. Uh, I don't recognize the part of the game she's in, but then I haven't seen the whole game or anything. So uh, it looks like she's got some real action-packed stuff going on. Oh, maybe I do recognize this bit. But we'll, we'll see for sure when we get over there. So I will be back tomorrow night. Tomorrow we're going to be doing Skyrim, which means we're going to be really kicking off the Extra Life Charity fundraising. I will have... Uh, I will, I, I'm going to adapt the previous Skyrim incentives that I've done before for charity stuff, and so I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, one important thing to note, I will have crowd control active, but crowd control will only apply to charity in the last week of the month. So if you're doing crowd control stuff and just don't, like... Keep it straight where the money is going. It's going to go to me for most of the month. We'll do like a week where the crowd control goes to the charity just so that we're clear. I don't want to mislead people and make them think, oh, I want to do crowd control stuff and give to the charity. It's going to be so great. And then only to learn later that, no, it's not actually tied into that yet. I have to specifically set that up to work with the charity. So that's uh, that. That's not going to be a thing. You will be supporting the stream if you do that, but the, the charitable stuff, that will come later. So we'll be doing regular incentives and everything for the, uh, for the Extra Life campaign tomorrow with the Skyrim. So you'll be able to do the fun stuff we've done before where I'm not allowed to use destruction magic or whatever. Or, you know, I have to use bow and arrow instead of magic or whatever the deal might be. Uh, we've had a good time with that in the past and it always works really well. So I'm looking forward to that. So I hope you'll join me for that. So let's get over to Ash's stream and see what she's up to. Um, and I will catch you back here tomorrow for some Skyrim. So have yourselves a wonderful rest of your night, day, evening, whatever it is where you are in the world. And I'll catch you again real soon. Bye for now. Whoa! No problem. <laughs> Please buckle your seatbelt first. Buckle seatbelt. Done. Pull throttle. Your door is a do jar. No, my door is a door. Close pod door. Done. Pull. Uh-oh. <laughs> I was literally typing it. Gosh, Roger, it would appear you have met an untimely demise. With the explosive destruction of the Arcata, you become part of a fresh collection of space debris. Oh. <laughs> wow. Who knew Struthiomimus was so strong?